Journey. Freedom Tour 2023. Saturday, April 1st at FedEx Forum. Journey with very special guest, Toto. Tickets on sale now at journeymusic.com. Don't miss Journey Live. Memphis, it's about damn time. Lizzo presents the special tour 2023. FedEx Forum, April 26th. With special guest, Lotto. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. The album special is available everywhere now. For more, visit LizzoMusic.com. HBCU Huddle with me, CJ Hurt, and Mike Wallace has all of your HBCU football, sports, and culture needs covered. We discuss the hottest stories weekly across the black college sports landscape, including the SWAC, MEAC, Tennessee State, Lane, Lamorne Owen, and all the black colleges in between. New episodes drop every Thursday, and you can stay connected with the latest stories and discussions about your favorite HBCU by going to grindcitymedia.com, selecting the podcast folder, and clicking on the HBCU Huddle tab. HBCU Huddle is the spot for all your black college sports and culture needs. Let's okay, go. let's go to All My Grizz because it's time to continue to talk about John Morant. The details Ooh. on this bad boy, it has the Crazy. Knights up top, the Holy. Grizzlies, and Murray State all scratched. That He's basically playing homage to his high school, his college, and then now his NBA teams. It's the show that brings you drip from around the NBA. Tune into the Sneak Fest show presented by Ten Toes Memphis, where we talk sneaker culture, fashion, shoe trends, and lots more. Join me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, Sherman, Jerry, and Adam every Tuesday live at 10 a.m. on Grind City Media. No, my first name ain't baby, it's Janet, Miss Jackson if you're nasty. Janet Jackson presents Together Again. A celebration of hits, plus brand new music live in concert. With special guest Ludacris. FedEx Forum, Saturday, April 29th. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. For more, visit JanetJackson.com. I got a picture we want to show you. You remember this one? So this is my draft class, but I'm not in the picture. I missed the bus. I get to the draft late. It was like really, I had a good, I got a good friend that's from New York and he was like showing me around New York um, all day. So you were sightseeing. I'm running around, you know, different boroughs. Did you miss the I'm, draft class I'm photo? In, I get to the green room and everybody's just sitting there looking at me like, really? <laughs> The Chris Vernon Show, live weekdays at noon on grindcitymedia.com or wherever you get your podcast. Monday. It is time to rise and grind. Jessica Benson, CJ Hurt with you coming out of a very busy, busy weekend. Spring has sprung. The sun is out. Yes, I looked at... Let me pull out my handy dandy. We'll continue our meteorology degrees here on Rise and Grind. The temperature checks for this week are... 67 degrees, 62 degrees, 63 degrees, 72, 75, 67, 74. Oh no, oh no, the 80s are coming. It's far too soon for that 80 degree humidity in Memphis, but it's okay, I'll take it because it feels better than the alternative at this point. Let's set up today's show. The final four is set. It is exactly how all 0.000185% of us thought that it would look with FAU, San Diego State, UConn, and Miami advancing. We're gonna have Gary Parrish on the show at 8.40. I don't know who made this graphic for We're CBS. Wondering. We're all wondering. This feels like an AI project, True, doesn't it? Like someone typed into the new GPT chat and was like, please give me a graphic for this year's Final Four that includes the city of Houston, 
three of the four coaches and the owl mascot because well, it's Dusty not a, it's doesn't not a deserve coach. to be it's, in there. Is it two coaches and two a coaches, player? Two coaches, a player, and an owl. And a mascot. Yeah. I, Robbie, calm down, man. <laughs> My goodness. I know. I can hear Robbie screaming all the way over here. <laughs> He's mad. Is Isaiah Wong in the helmet? That's Wong, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. And then two coaches and then the owl. I, what, I don't know. That's a weird-ass thing. This, we'll talk to Gary Parrish about this. Does anybody look more different in college basketball than Dan Hurley when he has glasses on versus when he does not have glasses on? He looks like a different person. Like yeah. his post-game press conference, he's in a hat and no glasses. And they put up some weird thing where he was doing art classes. I don't know. I had the volume down. And the next thing I know, it was showing Dan Hurley, the artist. I was like, that is not Dan Hurley. He looks like a different dude. It's like Clark Kent. Take the glasses off. Different guy. Um, anyway, crazy weekend of basketball. Men's Final Four is set. Women's Final Four will be set later on this evening. Some amazing performances over the weekend there as well. Big Grizzlies weekend, which will of course dive into the Grizzlies have won six straight, nine of their last ten. Memphis Grizzlies so hot right now. CJ, how was your weekend though? Was everything good? Weekend was great. Weekend was great. We uh, sipped on some rum. We talked before the show. I did some man stuff. Big man. Um, big, big man weekend. Did, did a, and we, we really should have ceremonies for when you become more of a man right so i got a pressure washer and <laughs> let's used get it. down to pieces let's go to defeat the huns to become <laughs> a man yes uh so i pressure washed the side of my shed just to try Exciting. it out i don't have any liquid the the soap for it yet so i got to go get some soap i just wanted to try it out make sure everything works so did that and then right after i pressure washed i with a with a cup of drink in my hand i fired up the grill so yeah I'm a man Grill, now. Pressure, pressure wash, wash, bragging about it. Yes, man. Big all, man. All energy. I'm missing is the the sandals with the with socks, the socks. On. Yeah, and I'll be Superman. Out. Yep, <laughs> super bad. Uh, I, funny enough, decided that I was going to not be beholden to all of the March Madness games. Like this time of year, first of all, it's so fleeting. Right? One second, you have 16 games in one day to sit down and watch all of. And the next second, the Final Four is set. And it's four teams that you absolutely never expected to make the Final Four. And you don't have March Madness for another another year. March is coming to an end. It's March 27th. By the time we get to the Final Four, it is April. So I decided, because of the Elite Eight games, I was like, you know, Chris and I deserve to go out for a nice dinner. And I just told myself, I'm not going to be stuck watching the Elite Eight game. I'm going to free myself. But then I didn't realize the Elite Eight games were at like one in the afternoon and four in the afternoon. So we ended up missing absolutely none of it. Went out for a nice dinner. Thought that I was going to get home and be able to watch Secession because that came back last night on HBO. And I am so excited for the final season of Secession and how many F-bombs they can fit into one episode of television, which is truly their best feat to date. And instead I had to watch the Golden State Warriors lose to the Minnesota Timberwolves because that's marriage. That's what you get in this <laughs> fun little world. But we also got to watch the Grizzlies earlier in the day. We're going to talk about the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies have a lot to celebrate. You don't want to get too hot, but they deserve it. They've won six straight, the longest active winning streak in the NBA right now. I deserve to celebrate because I have officially won the Rise and Grind chat bracket. That's right, everybody. That's right, CJ Hurt. All of my work and research and intelligent picks have led me with a grand total of 600 points in the RNG chat bracket. All 19 of us who participated in this very legit, very, um, I would say, intelligence-defining experience with one another. And you can see I had Alabama to win. Doesn't matter. That's how brackets work because I still have one Final Four pick in there. I have UConn. I have UConn. I almost had UConn in Texas, but Texas decided to choke to Miami down the stretch. So I have UConn, and it's a good thing because Robbie Weaver, I believe, was right behind me and had an opportunity. If Texas had won, Texas was his champion. I love the people who picked Memphis to win. I applaud your um, sincere support of the Tigers. Hell, they could have got could there. Have. That's the problem. Do you think, we talked about this a little bit after FAU beat Tennessee to advance to the Elite Eight, and now that FAU has advanced to the Final Four and they are the lowest of the low seeds, even though it's a nine seed, two five seeds, um, what is it? A nine seed, a four seed, and two, two fives? Two fives. Two fives. <laughs> That's how we got uh, the seeding this year. FAU, the lowest of that, the Owls. We should have known when the Owl wore a chain. 
for the first game, like, this team was different. This team believes that they can win, and they have. But I think it's even harder for Memphis because you just see the path that could have been. And this is absolute I, – I respect FAU. I'm putting respect on FAU's name. You do not win 35 games without being a good basketball yeah. team. They are capable. They have taken advantage of the path in front of them. They have seen matchups that they deem winnable. And they've won the games. And that's incredible. And FAU is the first Conference USA team to go to the Final Four since Memphis did it in 2008. They are on their way out of the American, or on their way out of Conference USA and into the American. I'm happy for Conference USA. They get to keep all the money that FAU garners. But if you're Memphis now, this, this new little kid on the block, FAU, who previously was just the school where Lane Kiffin went to college football coaching rehab for a couple years before making his way to Ole Miss, is now in the Final Four, and they're your new rival <laughs> you feels, gotta say it, it. you gotta lean into it because all the other ones are gone I can't and do now it. you're sitting here with an FAU team who in basketball not only bounced you from the tournament but they got to the final four they've got a basketball tradition now they've got a final four under their belt you've got to lean into it Tom Herman we were talking about this Robbie and I was we were texting back and forth during the game Tom Herman is a football coach there so now you've got that juice as well you got to lean into it. If this American thing, if you're going to keep screaming and shouting about it being a P6, you better start leaning into some of these schools that you're playing with now. It is good for the health of the conference. Like, ultimately, here you had Houston, who was this analytical darling, the number one of all, number even though they weren't the overall number one seed going to the tournament, but all year, a favorite to win it all. They lose, and instead you get FAU, your new conference bestie or worstie. We should call them worsties instead of enemies or frenemies. Your new worstie in, in the owls. Um, we'll talk to Gary about all that and more, and we'll dive into uh, a little bit more of the Final Four teams advancing. But we, of course, have to talk about the Memphis Grizzlies, who won two other games. And they can't help who they play this time of year. They can't help that they got two games against the Houston Rockets last week. They can't help that they got a – a mid Atlanta Hawks team yesterday in Atlanta who almost found a way to beat them, but the Grizzlies buckled down down the stretch. Starters did their business, starters, closers, whatever you want to call them. Gets the win in Atlanta yesterday, 123 to 119. And suddenly the Grizzlies have a two game lead over the Sacramento Kings in the two spot in the Western Conference. They are hanging on to that two seed with dear life and creating a little bit of separation. And ultimately, they wanted to be playing their best basketball now. And they are. And they're being able to do it with Steven Adams continuing to be on the bench. They have been able to do it despite losing Brandon Clark for the season. They have been able to get John Morant back into the lineup and back to doing John Morant-like things. He was back in the starting lineup. Everybody can chill. He had his two games coming off the bench, back in the starting lineup, had a cool casual 27 points to lead the team yesterday on 9 of 17 shooting. Yes, he was 0 of 3 from the three-point line, but I think the most important stat there, he was 9 of 11 from the free throw line and, again, is finding ways to get to the basket, create contact, and get to the line. That is going to be a way that he continues to rack up even more points, and he just looks like he's in total control of his body. He had six assists with that. Grizzlies with 28 assists. They're moving the ball well. The offense is flowing. Desmond Bain continues to find this ability to take over at the end of games, also getting to the basket, not just being a three-point threat. At this point, we don't even have to talk about him in that sense anyway. Like He has clearly developed himself into a three-level scorer, and it has been critical for this team to operate with not one, not two, not three, but a whole boatload of closers who can come up and make big shots. It's not just call 12 anymore. There is an assortment of players on this team who can step up in big moments and you see that from Desmond Bain with 25 points last night on 11 of 18 shooting the win over the Hawks is nice on the road the win over the Rockets was a blast like you were in the building on Friday night at FedEx Forum and I would not always say man I hope you were at a Grizzlies Rockets game because the Rockets just aren't they're not very good like if you look at most teams this season they have their highest scoring output of the season against the Rockets because they don't play very good defense but still for the Grizzlies to put up 151 points in that game on Friday night was remarkable and for what Luke Kennard did oh, Luke. Luke Kennard 10 of 11 from the three-point line sets a new Grizzlies franchise record for single game made threes all he did was take threes and he made 10 
of his 11 attempts. This is what Luke Kennard was brought in here to do. A man who knows what his job is and a team who is putting him in positions to do it well. We always talk about employers setting employees up to succeed. That is what the Grizzlies are doing with Luke Kennard. This is why you brought him in. He gives you a knockdown three-point shooter. Every time the ball comes out of his hands, you think, oh, Oh, where is he? Where is he? Where is he at? Where is he at? There he goes. Every time he shoots it, you think it's going in. That's the mood. And he leads the NBA in three-point percentage, and it's clear why. And there hasn't been any drop-off in Memphis. Does he go 10 of 11 again last night against the Hawks? No, not necessarily. But he still, last night off the bench, goes 5 of 10 from three. And when you look at what Luke Kennard has done over the last stretch of games for the Grizzlies, he is four of six from three against Miami, four of seven from three against the Spurs, five of 10 from three against the Warriors, four of nine against the Mavs, three of six against the Rockets, 10 of 11 against the Rockets, five of 10. I mean, he's doing exactly what you need him to do, and he's opening up the Grizzlies' half-court offense, which frankly took a little bit of a tumble without Steven Adams in there to gobble up all the offensive rebounds. Steven Adams as a screen setter, what he allowed the Grizzlies to do in the half-court. You get a little bit of a break with Luke Kennard being inserted into this group as somebody who you can count on. Count on Luke. Good old Uncle Luke. Good old the, Uncle he's Luke. Just the, the fact that Steven Adams is not here and you get this type of floor spacing from Luke Kennard, like you said, is huge, but imagine what's going to happen when Steven Adams gets back and the way that that floor is going to bend for not just job but for Bain as well dudes who have shown an ability to just get downhill and finish at the rim and draw contact and get and ones you got Luke in the corner you got Steven Adams setting screens and getting offensive rebounds you know that's that's huge that is something that can get you a game in a series and you only need four of them to, to advance so that that gets you a game in a series right there it is huge it was great to see Luke Kennard go out there and ball out on Friday and we talked before this stretch came up for the Grizzlies I think they were they were tied but the Kings held the tiebreaker for that two seat and you and I talked about it with this is the stretch right here the Grizzlies need to win all of these games because you have inferior competition doesn't matter how you go out there and do it do we want you to look good absolutely is it nice when you do you betcha but just win these games though to extend that lead uh, over the sacramento kings because you hadn't been great down the road and coming up down the stretch the last three games at new orleans at milwaukee at oklahoma city throw in the bulls there as well you got two tough ones against the clippers coming up at fedex form Yo, you, you've got to win those games. And the Grizzlies, to this point, have won all of the games against the bad teams here recently. I think they got the Magic coming up, and then that'll kind of do it for the bottom of the, the league, teams in the bottom of the league. They went out there. They took care of business. They got a two-game lead on the Kings. Now it's about holding on to that two seed. If you hear the Clippers, you got to be sick watching Luke Kennard. And again, Grizzlies front office commits. How did they not use robbery. him? Yes. I don't – that blows my mind. And people As said it at the time. As I was watching Luke Kennard on Friday night, it also blew my mind. And thinking of the Clippers coming into this building two times next week, I'm sure they're not thrilled to see their old worstie. I mean, I, I think – Bestie turned worstie. Think, I don't think there's any bad blood with I Kennard and the Clippers. I mean, can you – I mean, let's throw up the Grizzlies team picture that came out from over the weekend because Luke Kennard – just cheese in his face off. Look at this beautiful basketball team right here. The Memphis Grizzlies, their annual team photo. I am still trying to figure out how Brandon Clark's legs, surely he cannot get his foot in a shoe yet. I don't think so, but I need to ask how this magic was done. But this is the Grizzlies team photo, and everyone was very quick to look at one person in particular, and that would be Dylan Brooks, <laughs> because... Never has he ever smiled for a class photo in his life. He keeps the villain energy at all times. And then there's Luke Kennard in front of him, just like, yep, I'm happy to be here. I'm doing my job. I got my sleeve on. I'm here. I'm cheesing. Dylan is ready to pick you up full court right now. Right now. Right after the picture gets taken. He's ready to go. I'm fairly certain like Dylan Brooks wakes up on Christmas morning like that. <laughs> it's my birthday. I just won the lottery. I just won an NBA championship. The look will stay the same. I like it. It's consistency. 
It's consistency. But no, uh, when you look at the last time Luke Kennard had a stretch of attempting at least five threes in seven straight games, the only longer streak in his career was with the Clippers back in 2021 where he had an 11-game, 25-day streak. And they're going to be missing those times. And like you were saying, though, the Clippers coming into this building, they're without Paul George. So, again, you catch a bit of a break when it comes to a team not being at full strength. But you do what you do. You get the Magic, who have struggled on the road this year. You are the Memphis Grizzlies. I say it again, CJ. They have not lost on their home court since what day? February 5th. They have now won 11 straight you gotta at stop. home. It's the longest home winning streak since the 2013-2014 season. Are they going to lose a home game eventually? Maybe. I don't know. Jessica, come on. I don't know. They might only lose five home games this regular season. And then you can hold on to home court advantage in the playoffs a little bit longer. That will be of utmost importance. You can argue that the Grizzlies are the best home playing team in the NBA this season. That is acceptable. Thank you. You're good. But you're, you're trying I'm to jinx s- everybody. No, I'm yes, speaking Do you facts. not remember when it happened last time, Jessica? You've the told Grizzlies. me twice now. I've said it twice on the show, and guess what? They've won two games on their home court. Were they both against the Rockets? Sure. <laughs> That's okay. It is what it is. Calm down. Did they almost lose to the Rockets calm, at home the first time? Maybe. Calm down. That's they scored 151 saying. points. They're, they're on pace, though, to set the franchise record for home wins, aren't they? Yeah, yes. they're, they're on pace to set that record, which will be great for them to do a great sort of team achievement. Um, we but love this, team achievements like division all, championships this on this is, show. This is all about conference finals it's it, it's been that way it's felt that way for most of the year um and then you had the losing streak you had the situation pop off off the court with job ja, but it still to me felt like hey conference final or bust and this team we talked about it when all of the moves were made at the trade deadline mm-hmm. it's this team it's the clippers it's the mavericks it's the nuggets and who am i missing it's the suns who, hey, the, the expectation is to get to the conference final for all five of those teams. Only two of them can get there. Will the Grizzlies be one of the two? That's what this season will be, I think, based off of the success factor from a fan standpoint. Uh, will be, hey, how far in the playoffs did you get? It's great to have individual moments and individual nights from players like Luke Kennard. It's great to see John Morant go out there and be spectacular. The continued growth of Jaron and Bain and Santi is so good to see. But at the end of the day, all of that is for not. We're not going to remember that. We're going to remember what you did in the postseason. They clinched the postseason berth. They won the division. Now let's see how far they can get in the playoffs. And if they keep playing like this at home, it'll be real hard for a team to knock them out in a seven-game series. It's such a reminder of the ebbs and flows of an 82-game season. 82 games is a lot. A lot can happen in a year. A lot can happen in a season. And the Grizzlies have had highs. They've had lows. And now they're back to shifting into a high space. When you have Lil Baby out there quoting, it's a parade inside my city, going with NBA Youngboy, like, you, you've created a movement. I hear people in this city all the time saying, it's a parade inside my city. Over and over and over again. They can't stop. They won't stop. It's been unleashed. Once something is stop. unleashed, it sits deep within the soul. You know a growl towel is coming. You know it's coming. The playoffs are... The Grizzlies clinched a spot in the playoffs, buried the lead. It has felt assumed for a long time, but officially with their win on Friday, clinched that spot in the Western Conference playoffs. Still a ways to go before clinching that two seed, but if they continue playing this way. Before we take a quick break, it is your daily dose of Jaron Jackson Jr. should win Defensive Player of the Year. We will continue to speak the good word. And here is the highlight from last night. Jaron Jackson Jr. from nowhere... On John Collins, it's called a foul, and then they come back and they're like, no, that's just a really impressive block from Jaron Jackson Jr. Still trailing Brooke Lopez in total blocks. Lopez has played 15 more games, has 182 blocks this season. Jaron has 174, but Jaron Jackson Jr. has 26 more steals. He has 14 games with five or more blocks. He has eight games with eight-plus stocks this season. D-P-O-Y, D-P-O-Y, make him Defensive Player of the Year. According to Taylor Jenkins, they call him their most important guy, their M-I-G, most important guy guy goes to Jaron Jackson Jr. They're I'm Mig? not saying it. Mig? Yeah. Okay. I've never heard a coach say that one. Mm-hmm. Seems so basic. Mm. I just go with Depoy. Jaron Jackson Jr. 
<laughs> Depoy. All right, we got to take a quick break. When we come back, we will do a little Hot Best Express. We will connect with Gary Parrish around 8.40 this morning, talk to him about all the goodies happening in March Madness. That's all ahead here on Rise and Grind. The Grizzlies and Orion have partnered to help Grizz fans find their home court. Orion's home loan options help you finance your biggest dreams. Fans can sign up for more information on Orion's home loan options and for the chance to win two floor seat tickets to a Grizzlies game. Visit grizzlies.com slash Orion home loans for official rules. That's grizzlies.com slash Orion home loans. Equal housing lender. Don't put off getting your oil changed, Memphis. The Grizzlies' official partner. Take five oil changes faster than you think. There's no appointment needed. There isn't even a waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take five oil changes so fast you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take Five's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Memphis area. And remember, at Take Five, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. That means you won't even have time to show off your perfect jump shot or your killer crossover. Take Five to stay in your car 10-minute oil change. Obstructive sleep apnea is a sleep-related breathing disorder where a person's breathing is blocked or cut off while sleeping. It is seen in all age groups, but increases in frequency as we age and gain weight. Symptoms include snoring, excessive daytime sleepiness, gasping during sleep, and or insomnia. To schedule an appointment, contact Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialist at 901-276-6507. Let them help you breathe easy and sleep well. Hey ladies, it's your girl Big Sue. Let's have some real talk about these fibroids and how they're causing you to miss out on life events. Doubling up on your products when you do leave the house only to keep running to the bathroom because of the bladder pressure. Or maybe you're dealing with pelvic pain so intense it nearly takes your breath away. Be present and win your life back with the Fibroid Team at VIP. Proud sponsors of the Memphis Grizzlies. Call 901-747-1007. That's 901-747-1007. Or online at VIP Fibroid. Com. Hungry as a bear? Grizzlies fans can score big by ordering their favorite combos. If you pick up the three crunchy tacos combo from your local Taco Bell through April 18th, you'll score a key tag good for a free burrito supreme on future visits. What's better than a Grizzlies win? Free burritos at Taco Bell. Stop by today to get yours. Available at participating Memphis area Taco Bell locations while supplies last. Free item valid per disclaimer on back of key tag. Nacho fries are back at Taco Bell. You know, the fries covered in bold Mexican spices you dip in a warm nacho cheese sauce. You can also dunk them in a nacho cheese sauce or pour the sauce onto a pile of them and create like a nacho fries nachos. The thing is that you eat them with nacho cheese sauce. That's what makes them nacho fries. Otherwise, you're just eating fries and sipping on nacho cheese sauce, and that's the wrong way. Sorry, just really passionate about nacho fries. Nacho fries are back, only at Taco Bell. At participating U.S. Taco Bell locations for a limited time only while supplies last. Contact local store for hours and participation, which vary. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K-6 through grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit grizzlies.com slash community slash education today. Sonic has something delicious for you. Hey, announcer guy, that's your cue. Indulge in the all-new Sonic Steak Butter Bacon Cheeseburger with creamy steak seasoned butter and crispy bacon stacked on a 100% pure beef patty with two slices of melty American cheese and grilled onions layered between a warm bakery bun. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely craving that previously mentioned thing. Sonic Steak Butter Bacon Cheeseburger. Mmm, Sonic. Limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. LifeCare Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At LifeCare, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. 
They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Welcome back to Rise and Grind. It's time to board the Hot Mess Express. Chugga, 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 All aboard! The Hot Mess Express. Chugga, 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 chugga. I am putting myself on the Hot Mess Express because I am living on two hours of sleep, a dream, and one of my fake eyelashes is falling off. So it's a Monday here on Rise and Grind, but at least... I thought that the eyelashes were sewn on. No, oh, they're not. No, not anymore. Not I have the anymore. allergic reaction oh, to the yeah, glue, yeah, so yeah, now yeah. I have to physically put them on with my hands every morning unless I want my eyes to look like little beady eyes. Okay. It's so weird All being right. a woman. Nice. You talk about being a man. You get you get to power wash. You get to grill. What do I have to do? I have to put dry shampoo on these roots because I can't drive myself to my hair appointment for another two weeks. Well, I can't drive for another like two months, much to Chris's sadness. And I have to put these little fake eyelashes on. Do you know what it's like to get glue inside your eye, CJ? Have you ever put glue in your eye? Probably not because you're a normal man. Doing get man it, things. Get it all out because in like three more days, we're not going to care at all about I know. You women. Women's History it's Month over. is so close to being done and it's a travesty. But I will say I'm having a much better morning than the Dallas Mavericks who had to wake up with the realization that they lost to the Charlotte Hornets over the weekend. Not once, but twice. I thought surely yesterday. The game started tremendously poorly. Early afternoon game. Didn't even realize they were playing a second one against the Hornets until somebody shared the early score from that game. And the Mavs were down double digits yet again after they had lost to the Hornets. The shorthanded Hornets, who have shut LaMelo Ball down, are very much in the tank for victor sweepstakes. And the Mavs were 16-point favorites to the Hornets on Friday. And they lost. And that was the biggest upset, odds-wise, of the NBA season. It was a loss that Jason Kidd called Dog S-H-I-T. I don't know why I don't feel like saying that word this morning, but it feels a little aggressive. But Jason Kidd was in an aggressive mood following that loss because that's what you should be when your team loses to the Charlotte Hornets. And then to turn around and lose again, they are in shambles. They are now, as of this morning, out of the play-in tournament. They're in 11th in the Western Conference at 36 and 39. They are a game behind the Oklahoma City Thunder, who are currently in 10th. And yes, there are games to be played, but the way they are playing is not going particularly well. And to top it off, Luka Doncic, who had 40 points and 12 rebounds and 8 assists on Sunday, as Luka does, also got his 16th technical foul of the year and will now have to miss a game because that's what happens when you have 16 technical fouls. So he has a one-game suspension that will occur tonight when they play the Pacers in Indianapolis. It feels like things are devolving quickly for Dallas. Feel bad for Luca, who, I mean, recklessly speculating, I hadn't seen it from reputable sources, but it, it seems like there's some beef between him and his agent right now. And his agent is, of course, his mom. There was a statement made over the weekend about basketball not being real fun for him right now because of off the court stuff. And it seems like he's he's going through it real bad. Sometimes when you if that's what happened, again, hadn't seen it reported from one of the blue check mark people. Hadn't seen it, the article in, what is it, the Dallas Star or something like that? Any of the Houston Chronicles, nothing like that. But if that's the case, I can absolutely understand why your mind wouldn't be as focused on basketball mm-hmm. for, for Luca. Yeah, two it, things it sucks. Two things can be true. The Mavs are a dumpster fire right now, and the Luca Kyrie experiment is not working out. And two... Luka Doncic is a human, and we've experienced very human-like moments, because shocking, they're not just characters playing an NBA video game. Like, these are real people going through this season. We saw it with John Morant here in Memphis, uh, obviously what Andrew Wiggins is experiencing with the Warriors out in Golden State and continuing to miss time away. Life happens, and Luka Doncic 
does appear to be going through it a bit right now. And he was even open about some of those emotions in his post-game remarks on Friday. And you hate to see it. And you hope that for his sake, he's able to get through it and that the support is there. But he obviously also hates losing. And he looked so frustrated yesterday. And so that doesn't help. It all compounds. But Dallas in a bad, bad spot. Also on the Hot Mess Express coming out of this weekend, is Charmin the best fan of the NBA. I love Charmin tweets. Charmin tweeted when Steve Ballmer was announcing the new Clippers arena, said that they could supply the the toilet paper. He was so excited for the toilets. Now, they are with Patrick Beverly, who Patrick Beverly got his moment yesterday. He had a big shot, allowed the Bulls to beat the Lakers in a road win, 118-108. He had posted this earlier in the day saying, rolling back to Cali this weekend, get your cameras out, posing with Charmin. Hashtag Charmin partner. Some thought he was perhaps saying that the Lakers were soft, calling out you know, his former team. Turns out, he gets paid a quarter of a million dollars for this Charmin post. It's part of a viral marketing campaign featuring several NBA and celebrity endorsers. Charmin quote tweeted it with two versions of Charmin that feature Patrick Beverly on their toilet paper rolls, which, you know, just go for it. Like, I would like to be on a box of Miralax. Patrick Beverly gets to be on a box of Charmin. I understand. Sometimes you don't Sometimes you don't know when your, your sponsorships are going to click, and they just take hold. Charmin Ultra Soft is the best toilet paper out there fighting right now. <laughs> like, I love Charmin. I need Charmin Ultra Soft. I, I wish Charmin would give me a deal. How the hell they partner with Patrick Beverly? I know he talks a lot of shit, but, like, you're, you're supposed to be cleaning that up. So I, I also talk a lot of shit, so maybe that won't work out. Either way it goes, Charmin, I want to be sponsored by you. I, when the pandemic first popped off and everybody was taking all the toilet paper. Oh, you bought with Charmin? I couldn't find any. Oh. I couldn't find any in the city. I was on radio at 56 at the time, begging people to call in and tell me where the Charmin Ultra Soft was. They were like, well, we got the, the Charmin, regular Charmin. Like, no, I need Ultra Soft. Finally, a dude called in and said, hey, we got some. It just came in at the Sam's Club. Just meet me out back and I'll throw you some. And so he bought the Charmin Ultra Soft for me. I paid him back and I had enough Ultra Soft to get me through the pandemic. Congratulations Thank on you. your success. Patrick Beverly said he was not trying to troll anybody. He had just forgotten to post well, and just happened to post. Well, and the then time. he went out there doing Patrick Beverly stuff against the Lakers. LeBron James with the doing too the little. Doing at, at Shannon Sharp and hitting LeBron with the too little. That guy's a menace. He is a menace. LeBron James was back out on the court for the Lakers yesterday. He came off the bench. He played 30 minutes, though. He said after the game that two separate doctors told him to get foot surgery. But ultimately, why did he decide to come back this season? Take a listen. Did anyone ever suggest surgery? Yeah, two doctors. Why did you decide against it? Because I went to LeBron James' feet. And he told me I should the, um, did any, I'm not done. Nah. <laughs> are, are you going to need surgery? Someone later asked where the LeBron James of feet lives, what country he resides in, and he said, I don't know. He doesn't know where the LeBron James of feet is. I wanted to go to the LeBron James of feet. Save my Achilles, my foot, my ankle, all the specialness there. Just imagine being LeBron James and being able to use your name to describe the best in any field. Like, well, I'm the LeBron James of the LeBron James, but I went to the LeBron James of feet, and he told me that I don't need to get surgery. I can wait until the end of the season. Speaking of feet, we're a big foot show here. We should really try to say that more often because I think it could really spike our viewership. Big foot show. Look at this. Look at look at this foot. Look, look at her go. So we, we are my, just going all the way in up. there. We're all the way in. There are people who love boots, I've learned. It's a really weird, it's a really weird thing. <laughs> so strange. I hate people who are barefoot. I witnessed someone this week in a public place, I will not say where, I will not say when, who decided to be barefoot, and I was like, "Mm, that's certainly a choice. If you've ever been on an airplane where someone takes off their shoes, it's questionable. When they take off their socks, it's another story. I saw a video on TikTok this weekend of somebody using their bare toes to change the channel on the TV in front of them on the airplane. And so when I saw this photo of Kim Mulkey following LSU's game yesterday, standing barefoot, I thought to myself, this is why I don't wear high heels anymore, because you always run the risk of getting to a point where your feet hurt so bad, you just have to take them off. And I admit, 
I trounced around a wedding this past fall barefoot. Did I feel good about it? No, I felt disgusting. But at least at a wedding, it feels like it's, you know, eventually people just ignore. This is Kim Mulkey after punching a ticket to the final four. She is barefoot. And I'm not going to put her outfit from Friday, the pink feather flamingo situation on the Hot Mess Express, because frankly, I appreciate a woman who wears whatever the hell she wants to wear, except for being barefoot. It's too much. Put some shoes on. Please, for the sake of everybody, if you are listening out here and you are in a public place, do not go barefoot. Always have a little pair of slides. Always have a little, like just a little, I don't know, easy I mean, if you, if slip you, on if you can put on. If you're in the club, like you have to take them things off. Them dogs oh, be God, barking. Oh. Yeah, take so, them off. I, I always think back to my poor bachelorette party in Palm Springs where I took my shoes off to walk from club to club and didn't realize Palm Springs is a desert. So I stepped on flaming hot concrete and I burned the bottom of my soles, but I had had you know, a nice amount of drinks. And so I didn't notice it until the next day when my feet were on fire and they didn't heat, my toes didn't heal for months. And now we've talked about feet and toes. So I expect this to do absolute numbers. We have to take a quick break. When we come back, Gary Paris joins us on the other side. We will talk about the big bad unexpected final four is it the craziest of all time on how this bracket played out we'll get gp's take when we come back here on rise and grind Get your Mardi Gras beads ready. Fat Tuesday Memphis is now open. The world's most famous daiquiri bar is opening on Main Street and will be the official pregame party destination for your Memphis Grizzlies. Try the famous Fat Tuesday 190 Octane, Cat 5 Hurricane, or Miami Vice, or create your own signature drink with 12 delicious flavors to choose from. Grab your friends and book your next birthday party or girls' night out at the new Fat Tuesday Memphis, located at 8 South Main Street, where we get the party started. Socios is the first of its kind in fan influence and rewards. Through the Socios app, you can influence the team you love, connect with other fans, trade, and compete for rewards. Socios.com is the official crypto wallet and trading exchange for some of the biggest sports teams and franchises in the world, like FC Barcelona, Juventus, the UFC, and now they are an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. Download the Socios app wherever you download your apps, create an account, participate, and win. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. That's why we're looking for team members to reinvent the steel industry, much like the Grizzlies are reinventing basketball. Our edge starts with you at www.bigriversteel.com. That's www.bigriversteel.com. Sonic has something delicious for you. Hey, announcer guy, that's your cue. Indulge in the all-new Sonic Steak Butter Bacon Cheeseburger with creamy steak seasoned butter and crispy bacon stacked on a 100% pure beef patty with two slices of melty American cheese and grilled onions layered between a warm bakery bun. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely craving that previously mentioned thing. Sonic Steak Butter Bacon Cheeseburger. Mmm, Sonic. Limited time only at participating Sonic Drive-Ins. Breathing easy requires good lung health. However, there are signs your lungs may not be healthy. A persistent cough may be a warning sign of lung disease, such as COPD, asthma, post-COVID lungs, or cancer. Other symptoms to look out for include feeling short of breath, wheezing, losing weight, coughing up blood, or chest pain. Don't ignore or dismiss these symptoms. Call Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialists at 901-276-2662 to schedule your lung health screening. It's a matter of life and breath. 
Sauced by Will Smith is taking the championship taste of FedEx Forum. Come enjoy your favorite lineup of sauces on traditional and boneless wings the next time you see the Memphis Grizzlies play. All of your favorite sauces, including the famous Garrick sauce, are now available as you cheer the home team on. Visit Sauced by Will Smith inside FedEx Forum at your next Grizzlies game or come visit us anytime at our location in South Haven, Mississippi. Championship sauce, championship taste. Come get sauced today. Grizzlies fans, super exciting news from Cintron Sparkling Energy Drink, the official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies. Cintron has combined all three of their delicious flavors into a limited edition six-pack sampler box. Try Cintron's great-tasting cranberry classic and sugar-free all-in-one pack. Cintron Sparkling Energy Drinks deliver long-lasting energy, are gluten-free, and have no preservatives, and have less calories and sugars than other energy drinks. Hurry and pre-order your Cintron six-pack sampler box today at CintronWorld.com slash Grizzlies. Welcome back to Rise and Grind. It is Monday. It is time to catch up with one of the busiest men of March, Gary Paris. GP, where are you this morning? I am in my home for like 48 hours, maybe. <laughs> I got back late last night, and uh, I'll be here for a minute, and then it's 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 on the road again, as Willie Nelson once famously said, this time to Houston. So it'll be nice to go to a, a different city than New York City. Uh, I When I started my career, I would go to a lot of different places and, and, and watch and write about basketball games. Now it's just back and forth to New York over and over again. So uh, going to Houston, uh, it, it'll be uh, something different, which is something I, I can appreciate. It's upsetting to me that we didn't make a graphic of you in a astronaut suit similar to how CBS put two coaches, a player, and an owl headed to the <laughs> Final Four. It's a crazy Final Four, Gary. I can't believe we're coming out of a weekend saying that we are about to watch FAU, San Diego State, UConn, and Miami as the last four teams standing heading to Houston. What did you make of all of the Elite Eight games and what we ended up with those last four? Well, it's obviously surprising. I mean, if you at any point in this season would have paused and said, okay, the Final Four is going to be Florida Atlantic, San Diego State, Miami, and UConn. Nobody would have would have, would have have thought that made much sense. Although, it, it is worth noting, all, all four of these teams are in the top 20 at Ken Palm, and, and three of the four are conference champions. And the other one, UConn, is a team that rated as the best Big East team uh, all season long in the, in the predictive metrics, or at least most of the season in the predictive metrics. So uh, from that perspective, maybe we shouldn't be as surprised. But I think more than anything, it's a – what we're, we're seeing here is a byproduct of, of two different things. One, just the randomness of a single elimination tournament, which we've known is a, a real thing for a while. And then, though there were some you know, really good teams with really impressive resumes, bodies of work this season, um, I, I think this was consistently said throughout December, January, February, and early March that there wasn't a great team, an unbeatable team. Uh, like you have in, in some seasons, or at least teams that, that seem unbeatable or or a tier above everybody else. Yeah, uh, you know, the, the one seeds were the one seeds, and they deserved to be that, but there was never that big of a gap between the ones and the twos or the twos and the threes. And as this tournament progressed, um, th that's why we lost what were, uh, at least through the regular season in, in conference tournaments, the best teams in the country. I've seen a lot of people like freaking out about it, but at the end of the day, the last – five straight national champions were number one seed. So thus far, this is an anomaly. But I did see a wild stat and wanted to ask your take on it. 15 of 35, so 43% of the combined players in the final four teams playing rotations were acquired through the transfer portal, perhaps Miami. Shout out John Ruiz of NIL fame down in Miami. Had a really good weekend. Eight of 20 of those starters for those teams were also coming from the transfer portal. Is this the new normal as we look at how teams are built through NIL, through the transfer portal in college basketball? It, it really is. I mean, if you look at Kansas State, a team that went on a, a really nice run and, and you know, made the Elite Eight and was, you know, maybe a shot away from going to the Final Four, their top nine scores at Kansas State, none of them, zero, started their college careers at Kansas State. Nine transfers, top nine scores. And that's why... If I were a high major Division I men's college basketball coach right now, I would not recruit high school players unless they rated or projected as the type that could help me immediately in their true freshman seasons. 
Because if not, they're just buried on your bench. And if they're buried on your bench, they're going to transfer after a year anyway. So I really do think most prominent college basketball programs are going to recruit fewer high school players going forward and, and more transfers. Like you need a point guard, go find him in the portal. You need a big, go find him in the portal. You need a stretch four, go find him in the portal. At this point, if I were, again, one of the, the best programs in America, I'd be recruiting five-star guys who can help me or, or transfers. That's where you build your teams, and you can build them in one offseason. When I was watching UConn absolutely destroy Gonzaga by 28 points on Saturday night, I thought, well, this is going to be the team that wins it all. And I still feel that way coming out of the weekend, but I'm also cognizant of the fact that I watched San Diego State find a way to yet again come back and win a game. Watched Miami come back against a Texas team that looked like they were poised to run away with it in the middle of that game. But when it comes to UConn, you just watch them and think this is the kind of college basketball team that can win it all. Great shooters. Jordan Hawkins has been playing great. They dominate the boards. A great big in Sunogo. And then I'm left there thinking... How is UConn not considered a blue blood at this point? When you look at the fact that they're about to be at their sixth Final Four in 25 years and they have four championships, could win a fifth. They've had three different coaches along the way. Should they be in that blue blood conversation at this point? Yes. Thank uh, you. Know, they've, you. Won, they've won four national championships in the past 23 NCAA tournaments, and they're the favorite now to, to win this one. So if they are to win two more games and make it five in a 24 tournament span. I mean, that is outrageous in two more national titles than anybody else has in that span right now. Um, in, in that, in that time frame, UConn has four Duke has three North Carolina has three. That's the top in North and, and UConn could, could, could be two ahead of everybody else if it wins two more games. Um, and like you said, that to do it with three different coaches at a place like Storrs, Connecticut, I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's not the type of place you can envision like this basketball power being built out of basically nothing. And so Jim Calhoun deserves a lot of credit for that. But then Kevin Ali got one and now Dan Hurley's right here. And 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 it is undeniably in my adult life, one of the, the very best basketball programs in America and should be thought of that way. Gary. Uh, what makes San Diego State so good defensively? Just running through, looking at what they've given up in the tournament and then looking at what, like, uh, uh, Creighton has gone out there and done in rounds before San Diego State. Like, that's impressive. I think Creighton was, like, 70-something, 80-something, 80-something, and then 50 against San Diego State. Alabama, another one who we know they can score a lot of points. They're a high-scoring team, and San Diego State went in and held them to about 64, 65 points. What makes them so good? Well, it's their identity. That, that's what their program is, is built on. They take real pride in it. They, they recruit to it, and they, uh, they, they build it from, from the jump. Uh, you, 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 you know, because I'm in studio for CBS Sports Network um, every week during the season – and we carry a lot of late night Mountain West Conference games, I see San Diego State an awful lot. And I had said at one point during the middle of the season that I would take them to go to the Sweet 16 regardless of their bracket, regardless of their perceived path. I always thought that team was, was really, really good. But, you know, it, first it starts with Steve Fisher. Now it's Brian Dutcher. Um, that, that, that is a, a – that's just – you, you, you look at – Program. I, I think the best college basketball programs in the country, um, year after year, they they have an identity to them. Like at, at you know, with Shaka Smart, it, it it's going to be one thing. With Mike Rhodes now at VCU, it's going to be something else. With Brian Dutcher at San Diego State, it's going to be something else. But if you're running a, a consistently good program, uh, there's something that you can. Um, realistically assume is going to be there year after year after year. And at San Diego State, it's 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 their ability to guard you. Um, they they, they want to win games in the 50s or, or the 60s. They, they they can they have a guy who can go for 20 or 25, but but that that's not the recipe for success for them. It, it's to to make every single shot very very difficult. And though you you can do it in the Mountain West Conference, and and people don't maybe appreciate it the the way that they should uh, i think as they've gone through this bracket um it is it, it's starting to resonate with with college basketball fans a, across the country this was always or at least uh, for a long period of time one of the best teams in the country and and some power conference schools over the the past couple of weeks have have got to see it up close for the first time 
that game was so fun between San Diego State and Creighton, and then it was such a bummer that it ends with free throws. And yes, obviously, you look back and was it a foul? Technically, it sure was. Do you always call it in that situation? Yes, yes, CJ, he grabbed him. It is a foul. But I will say there's some big main character energy coming from the officiating from this weekend, Gary, and even looking back at that UConn-Gonzaga game, you see Drew Timmy having to spend some time on the bench with four fouls. Ultimately, I'm watching the games thinking, man, these are awesome, but it would be even more awesome if perhaps players were given six fouls in the case of a Drew Timmy, or that thing isn't called yesterday and we see that one play out and potentially go to overtime. What do you... CJ... Well, well, the, the, the end of the Creighton-San Diego State game, as much as I didn't like to see it in like that at the free throw line, the truth is, like, that's a foul. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, the, the, I, I don't think you could find a single official on the planet who would look at that and say that was not a foul. That right. was a legal basketball play. So we're, we're not debating whether it was a foul or not. It right. was undeniably a foul. What we're debating is, is do you blow the whistle in that moment? And I, I can listen to it. Um, from, from both perspectives, um, you know what, what what some people will tell you, and I, I tend to b- agree with this: is if it's a foul in the first minute, then it's a foul in the last minute. If it's a foul in the first five seconds, it's a foul in the last five seconds, and that that was a foul. Um, the the counter argument to that is okay, but was it a foul in the first five seconds? Was it a foul in the first minute? Do you remember them calling fouls like that throughout the game? So the consistency is the thing that I think uh, frustrates folks and. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm open to that idea as, as well. Broadly speaking, and this is something I've been saying for, for a long time, I think uh, foul trouble as we know it is a real problem in, in the sport of, of college basketball in, in a way that it's just not a, a problem in the NBA. I, I'll make this very simple. You, you watch the NBA every single night. Think about how often you watching a, you're watching a college basketball game and somebody's best player or second best player or an important player is on the bench with quote unquote foul trouble. Think about it. It it feels like it's every other game. Now think about how often it happens in the NBA. Not very often. Can you imagine LeBron James being sent to the bench with quote foul (laughs) trouble with 17 minutes left in game seven of the Western conference semifinals? I like it. That kind of stuff doesn't happen, but it happened to Keontae Johnson, Kansas state's, leading score um, on Saturday night in the Elite Eight. And then it happened to Drew Timmy, Gonzaga's best player, Saturday night in the Elite Eight. And I want to be clear about this. I'm not certain of the best way to resolve it because the the easy thing is to say, we'll just go to six fouls. But, and I'm not old enough to remember this, the Big East did go to six fouls at, at one point. And by all accounts, it was a disaster. It did not fix the foul trouble problem as much as it just added more fouls to the game. So I'm not somebody who insists, well, the way you do this is go to six fouls because there's some evidence from a long time ago that suggests that that doesn't actually fix the problem. If the problem we're trying to fix is keep the best players on the court more often. So I'm I'm willing to get, I don't know, 10 smart people in a room, chop it up, listen to everybody's ideas and, and maybe experiment a little bit. I don't know that there's an obvious, simple solution to this problem, but I do know it, it is a problem. There is no other mainstream American sport where the best players are often more or less uh, you know, sent to the bench because of rules within the game as much as college basketball players are sent to the bench because of, of rules connected to the game. And again, I, I'm not exactly sure how to fix it, but it is something that I think the sport should be talking about because um, when you watch that Gonzaga-UConn game the other night, it was clear to me Gonzaga was probably going to lose that game mm-hmm. no matter what. But when Drew Timmy went to the bench with four fouls, uh, the game was essentially over. It was a 10-point game when he went to the bench. He came back three minutes, I believe, 21 seconds later, and it was a 21-point game. When he went to the bench, UConn ended it. Yeah, I've had this conversation, it feels like, every year at the end of the college basketball season because every year, to your point, Gary, it's a problem, and I think – Uh, Peter Edmondson and I were talking about it back when I was at 56, and one of the things he suggested was, okay, cool, you give each individual player five fouls, six fouls, whatever, but you don't foul them out. If you hit that point, 
in the in the game where okay you got five fouls your next foul is the other team gets a free throw and the ball you kind of treat it like a tech so yes there's a penalty for picking up more than five fouls but the penalty isn't okay the star player isn't on the court anymore because you're right a, a, a sport in all sports not just college basketball they they need stars and you want to go out there and see the stars play and you want the stars to decide how the game goes you don't want it to be an officiating thing so if you do it that way you get to keep the guy on the court and if it's a double bonus or something like that and he picks up the foul then it will be okay you get the one free throw and you go to the free throw line to shoot the the double bonus so now you got to think as a strategy for a coach okay maybe we do a little offense defense here maybe there we don't it's not worth having this dude on the court or something like that but you let the coaches decide and the players decide not necessarily the rules and the officiating totally open to that uh, i'm open to anything other than than what we have right now and i'm not saying that every uh, possible solution that somebody trots out would be a good one but i just know that and, and I talked about this over the weekend on the Iron College Basketball Podcast. Um, in, in life, broadly speaking, if there's a problem, then you should try to resolve it. I, I'm not that interested in, in letting problems sit because if you just ignore them and, and then and, and highlight them whenever they pop up, but then don't do anything to, to try to resolve them, it's just going to be a problem again day in a week in a month but it's coming back unless you resolve a problem the problem's always going to come back and this is a problem in college basketball so whether it's let's just go to six fouls for each player or what you and peter suggested which is uh, some sort of additional penalty but you're not fouling out of a game I, i'm open to, to all of it i just don't like the idea that we turn on a high stakes college basketball game and the most important players are very reasonably at risk of not being on the court in the most important parts of the game. It happens too often. I can remember covering a Final Four game. It was Georgetown, Ohio State. Two great centers in Greg Oden and Roy Hibbert. That was yeah. the story going mm -hmm. into yeah. it. And then in the first half, they both had two yeah. fouls, and they were both on the bench. That, that's not the, the best way to, to conduct a sport to decide championships. I, I wish we would at least explore um, a better way to try to keep the best players on the court as much as possible. And I know that somebody listening right now, because a million people have tweeted it at me when I made this point previously, well, hey, why not just don't foul? Hey, just don't <laughs> foul, right? And I, I get that. But uh, that's another one of those things where that's not a solution to the problem. You don't think there's – every coach in America has told his players who are um, prone to finding themselves in foul trouble – to not foul like I, you you think it's it's just lost on every coach in america that they've never said oh you know what maybe we should try is not fouling uh, obviously that that's a that's something that is talked about within basketball programs but the fact that we're talking about what we're talking about right now suggests that it, it's not a solution to the problem um you know it, 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 again there's just a the, there's a dramatic difference between how often nba players are in quote foul trouble and how often college players are in foul trouble we as a sport of college basketball should try to figure out a way to, to make sure our best players are on the court when important things are being determined because right now it doesn't happen often enough. Yeah, I'm with you, GP. Sitting on problems has not voted well for the NCAA in the past, so being a little right. proactive. I know you're headed to Houston, and before I let you go today, I have to give you some musical theater advice because I know that's what you come here for. When you are mm -hmm. back in New York City, don't go see a show called Bad Cinderella. It's supposed to be really bad. Like, it's in the name, bad. It's the new Andrew Lloyd Webber show. But it got me thinking, is FAU the bad Cinderella? Because I have seen so many people, yes, we made that connection, it just came to me in my brain, right here, right now. I've seen so many people say, is FAU the most unlikable Cinderella ever? And I think that might be a little unfair. I think they're just good. And they've believed in themselves to get to this point, even when no one else believed in them. And now at 35 wins this season and headed to their first Final Four after only winning their first tournament game ever in school history within this year tournament. But what do you make of that argument of people looking at FAU and saying, this is not what a Cinderella is supposed to look like, and yet here they are a nine seed and the lowest seed going to the dance? 
So expand on the argument. What what is what is specifically the issue people have with Fart Atlantic? Because I'm 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 uh, unaware of this. People got really mad when they were dancing to Little Baby in the locker room following their win over Kansas State because that was Kansas State's go to song beforehand. They had the the dunk moment um, in their win over yeah. Fairleigh Dickinson when Fairleigh Dickinson raised the white flag and FAU came back and tried to hit that windmill dunk and missed. Um, but that became a moment. I think in Memphis it's amplified because of course they're going to think FAU is a bad Cinderella because they think they would have been a better Cinderella this year and not even called themselves a Cinderella. So I do wonder if my timeline, of course, is very Memphis-centric, but I was surprised to see this unlikable Cinderella take from a couple people outside of this city, and I wondered if it was more of a group think when it comes to FAU. I think they're very likable. When Dusty May has his whole team come with him after the game and says, I'm not doing this post-game interview without my entire team behind me, I'm like, oh, that's a that's a nice coach, including his team in this moment. Is it cheesy? Sure. Does he look corny in that hat that they gave him? Absolutely. But I don't know. I'm curious. I find them likable. And, and you know, I've known Dusty for a, a, a long time, and to, to see him there's a funny moment between he and I earlier in this season. I, um, when Charleston got ranked in the AP poll, and I was happy for that program and that city and Pat Kelsey, but one of the points I made, because people would uh, ask me over and over again on Twitter because they'd see Charleston in the AP poll, and they'd say, hey, why are you not voting for Charleston? Why don't you rank Charleston? And I was like, because they have a lot of wins, but there's no substance there. I don't think this is one of the 25 or 26 best teams in the country. I don't think it's one of the 30 best teams in the country. And, and, and nothing in their body of work suggests that I'm wrong. Nothing in the computer numbers suggests that I'm wrong. And one of the points while making that point that I said was, if you want to vote for a mid-major with a great record, the team that's actually worthy of top 25 votes, this is like back in December, is Florida Atlantic. And I was, so I was early on them being a, a high-level team. And I talked about this on the Island College Basketball Podcast, and my, uh, the, the person I do it with, um, Matt Norlander, uh, played some audio that I don't even remember saying. I mean, I vaguely remember saying it, but um, he played some audio from a couple of years ago when I was – I was doing sideline reporting from literally from right here where I'm sitting right now. It was during the pandemic year. So we were literally calling games remotely. I was calling games from my home. So I was the sideline reporter on a Conference USA game. It was Western Kentucky and somebody else. And there had been a pattern that had developed in this season where to cut down on travel and other possible issues, Conference USA was having teams play back to back. So if it was Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee, They would maybe play on a Friday and then play again on a Saturday or play on a Friday and then play again on a Sunday. And one of the points I'd made is that there was this pattern that developed that when you have comparable teams, uh, the team that wins the first game often loses the second or vice versa. And it was, uh, you know, unclear exactly why this was happening, but it was something that was clearly happening. And on this broadcast, I said, now, if it's not comparable teams, like if it's Western Kentucky and, you know, just a whatever team like Florida Atlantic, well, then, yeah, Western Kentucky is probably going to sweep that two game series. But when you have comparable teams, the team that wins the first one has been losing the second one. And Matt Norlander played this on the Island College Basketball Podcast as I was complimenting Florida Atlantic. And uh, and I was like, whoa, where did you even pull that from? And he said, Dusty May sent it to me <laughs> and Dusty May. And I uh, it's, it's a reminder that you got to watch everything you say, because people will remember it. Even if you don't, Dusty May was watching that game and heard me say, if you're playing a whatever program like Florida Atlantic, well, then, yeah, you're going to sweep that one. But if you're playing a comparable team, a good team, well, then what the pattern suggests is that you're more likely to split than, than not. And Dusty clipped that, kept it on his phone, and said, I want to get this program to a point where nobody ever says something like that about us again. And to watch them now, and Dusty and I, um, we laughed about it earlier in the season and, and, and texted back and forth about it. But, but for him to, to actually be at a place where I said what I said, and it was a throwaway line, like I could have said Rice instead of Florida Atlantic. I just happened to say Florida Atlantic because that's the school that came out of my mouth. But for him to, to clip that and then use it as some sort of motivation and then to watch him this weekend, you know, put that hat on all goofy and and recognize that they're not only going to the final four, they're going to a final four that they're good enough to win is just an incredible, incredible story. So 
I find him likable. I find them likable. And um, I, 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 they're not my pick to win the national championship. UConn is. But when George Mason, VCU, Loyola, Chicago, some of these other quote-unquote Cinderella's got to the Final Four, I thought they had no shot of winning the national title. I give, I give Florida Atlantic an actual shot to win two more games because though UConn is better than them, I don't think anybody left in this bracket is that much better than Florida Atlantic or, frankly, that much better than anybody else. Yeah, Dusty May has had We Are Built for This Moment written on the whiteboard, and they certainly have looked to be the case. GP, thank you, as always, for joining us. Enjoy Houston. Houston, we have a problem. We hear it so many times this time of year, but you're not a problem. Thanks. I will. It, d- <laughs> depends on, it depends on depends who you Depends on ask. the day yeah. <laughs> and who you ask. All right, we'll see you next week, GP. Have a good one. Next Bye. week, it'll be the national championship game. It'll be a Monday coming out of the Final Four. FAU makes it. They're coming to the American. Every single school leaving Conference USA and coming to the American next year is still rolling in their tournaments. I don't, we don't talk about those other tournaments, but Charlotte went ahead and won the CBI. Yeah. UAB and North Texas both in separate semifinal games in the NIT tonight. So double chance for one of them to rep in the NIT championship game. And FAU just casually being a nine seed going to that's, the final four. That's, that's huge for the Americans. It's on it's growth. A, it's a basketball P6 conference now. Back. They didn't. They, <laughs> they, those other schools didn't leave. They got put out for better schools coming through. Basketball. It's a basketball conference now, baby. Also, we need to mention more feet. Um, the viewership dropped. Oh, shoot. Yeah, it's, it, we were up around 130 live viewers, but now we're down into the low 100s. Okay. Here, we, need, here. we need to throw that foot back up, Jessica. I apologize. There it is. Robbie, don't put it on the money shot. Yeah, geez. Put it on the foot. Goodness okay, gracious. There Look at the it bottom is. of this boot. That's what you guys wanted right there. That's what you want to see. Maybe I should start doing my physical therapy exercises live on the show, and you can see me cry in real time. So then we have feet and tears. Oh, people love that. I think that sounds like a we recipe We break the for YouTube. Success. We break the GCM YouTube. You know, I have thought to myself often, because occasionally we get new viewers who come in, and we've had some new people joining the show and joining the chat, and we see you, and we love you. Imagine watching the show for the first time and just being like, who is this chick who leans back with a blanket on her lap every morning and just talks about stupid stuff? Like, why does she have a blanket on? The same blanket, too. The stupid teal blanket that I've had since college. This was my freshman dorm blanket. I had a zebra print comforter and teal accents because I went to school in 2010. That is definitive of my era. All right, we will take a quick break. We'll come back. We will get into Memphis Mondays, some big news from the Memphis women's basketball program over the weekend. We also have some really fun double taps still ahead here on Rise and Grind. We are talking about our favorite concerts that we have ever been to. In honor of Zach Myers, Run DMC, ZZ Top, and a band Leonard Skinnerd, and a band called the Damn Yankees. It was Christina Aguilera. (laughs) That was the strip justified tour. Okay, well, I was in grade four, so (laughs) I didn't go for Justin Timberlake, and I had to wait through him. Join Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Ray Johnson, every Thursday as we debate the hottest topics in the NBA. I am a Joe on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and our social channels. Eight time Grammy Award winning Anita Baker. Anita Baker, the songstress, live in concert for one night only. FedEx Forum, November 22nd, 2023. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. Don't miss your chance to see the legendary Anita Baker, live in Memphis. Roser, let's look at the MLS futures. See, I told you, LAFC and Philadelphia Union, my top two picks. LAFC. Top of the list. Right there at the top. I'm going to try to be a fan. I'm going to try and watch these games. No, now that St. Louis has a team. To that's Apple TV Plus. Oh, but that now i got to so get cap. Apple Plus. Look, I'm wearing the gear. I mean, so go team. Me and Taylor Twelman. Get your sports betting picks and trends with Rob Fisher, Lang Whitaker, CJ Hurt, and John Roser. The Odds Couple. Now live every Thursday at 10 a.m. on Grind City Media and YouTube. I got a picture. We want to show you. You remember this one? So this is my draft class, but I'm not in the picture. I missed the bus. I get to the draft late. It was like really, I had a good, I got a good friend that's from New York and he was like showing me around New York. 
um, all day. So you were sightseeing. I'm running around, you know, different boards. And you missed the I'm, draft class I'm photo? In, I get to the green room and everybody's just sitting there looking at me like, really? <laughs> The Chris Vernon Show, live weekdays at noon on grindcitymedia.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Memphis Monday is presented by Life Care Ambulance. Life Care is employee-driven. Their passion is their people. Join their incredible team of EMTs and paramedics today. You can learn more at lifecareamb.com, an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. Welcome back to Rise and Grind. The feet stay up. So if you stayed through the break, lucky you. Right under there, there's a toe. Ew, too much, too far. We've gone too far on a Monday. All right, we got to talk about the Memphis women's basketball team. Obviously, we talked on Friday about them losing to Bowling Green in the NIT semifinals and ultimately did not see, by the time we went on air Friday, everything that happened at the conclusion of that game with Jamira Shoots, who was a part of an incident in the handshake line. She struck a Bowling Green player, Elisa Brett, during that handshake line. There's video of the confrontation. The game was being played at Bowling Green. Ultimately, Bowling Green's athletic department released a statement saying that they charged a member of the Memphis women's basketball team with assault. The assumed member there would be Jamira Shute. So a very serious situation to end a wonderful season for the Memphis Tigers, who ultimately you know fall short of an NIT championship but by all means wildly successful over 20 wins getting back to the NIT for the first time in a long time getting the furthest they've gotten since the late 90s as a team and to see the storyline turn into the Jamira Shoots incident it was disappointing a lot of the takes were very disappointing this became a national story it was picked up not just by sports organizations but by CNN by MSNBC by Fox, and you know what happens when things like that get picked up. No surprise, some of the uh, the takes there, but ultimately we don't know any further information on where this goes with Jamira Shoots. I know, CJ, you've always been a fan of getting rid of handshake lines. Because they're stupid. And it's stupid to charge somebody because of something that popped off in the middle of a handshake line. You know when you handle that? In the line. That's when you handle it. So instead of flailing about and hitting the ground, holding your pressure little nose, get up and pop her back. Good grief. Have, is this what we've become? Is this what we are? And uh, I'm not advocating fighting, yeah. but like if you're going to fight, handle in handshake line. How many times are we going to have to see this, by the way, before we say, all right, maybe this, this is enough. There, we're not forming lines to shake hands professionally. You come onto the court, you greet who you want to greet, and then you keep it moving. Football, NFL games in, get on the court or onto the field, greet who you want to greet. And then you keep things moving. Mm-hmm. What is the point of this? Some type of um, archaic notion of sportsmanship? Sportsmanship, we competed. That's the greatest form of sportsmanship right there. Us going out there, trying our best to go out there and beat one another and get this win. So at the end of that, be it uh, five and six-year-olds or 20, 21-year-olds, there's no need for the handshake line anymore. Tempers are already hot. Coaches are hot. We saw, uh, we've seen a couple of coaches lash out at one another. Most notably, the one that tickles me the most is Jawan Howard, popping my man in Wisconsin. And then after the fact, they're all good to go. They're buddy buddy at Big Ten Media Days again. So, listen, in the heat of the moment, let's let everybody go away, let it cool down. If you want to greet somebody and they want to be greeted by you, absolutely go greet them. We got a great video of. Um, Kansas State's coach. Why Jerome I, Tang. Tang. Coach Tang going into Florida Atlantic's locker room. Yes. We've gotten videos of Dawn Staley going into Norfolk State's locker room and, and just saying, hey, you guys were really, really good. Keep it up. Keep working. That type sort of thing. That's great. That can't happen in a handshake line because of the nature of the handshake line. You're just walking by slapping five. There's no point in that. It's done for what that juice, that lemon isn't worth the squeeze. You're not getting enough juice out of that. And it wasn't just Memphis and Bowling Green. Things could have got physical. Uh, Louisville and somebody they the, were playing the on Haley the women's Van side. Leith. Was it yeah. Louisville, Miami? No. I can't yes, remember Miami who it was, but the, the word on the curb is, if you read the lips, is call me bitch one more time. And it was an all right bet. Now, she didn't say the word, but if she had of, that would have been a situation. Yeah. So, listen, let's get rid of handshake lines. There's no point in it. 
it's, it's done. It's old, and don't press charges because of a fight that pops off and a handshake line. That's silly. I will say as long as handshake lines do exist, you can't put yourself in a situation where, and once again, we're talking about was it an open palm? Was it a closed fist? The report was that it was a closed fist. I watched the video. I can't tell for myself with my little eyes from that video. You can't hit someone after a game. You're in the handshake line, and I agree with you. I do think it's an archaic form of sportsmanship. And when you're a kid, it teaches you valuable lessons, right? Because when you're a kid, it's a little less, I don't know, the stakes are a little less high. You're playing rec ball. Learn how to respect your teammate. Learn how to respect your opponent, whatever. I, I can argue for through elementary school learning that. But ultimately, what do you get? And you get situations like this, and people are, people are mad when you lose, when you're a competitor, when something happens in the middle of a game where you feel like a player you know, either hurt you or did something that affected your game. It's really hard to stand there and say, all right, cool, let me shake your hand. That said, Jemira Schutz is a fifth-year senior. Her career is done. So for everybody claiming that she should absolutely be suspended for the season, there's no season to suspend. Is that what we are? Yes. We can't, we can't handle seeing somebody get popped? I guess it's no. bad. Let me, let me say this. Yeah. Let me, this is a weird hill to be on. Don't you get on this hill with me because you're a professional. I'm, I would like to you, say you, I'm you not on you're the You're nowhere. Hill. Jessica is nowhere near this hill. <laughs> All right. I'm on it, though. Fights happen. They happen. People get popped. They get walloped. You know when you handle it? You handle it in that moment. Right then and right there is when you handle it. So, if you got an issue with what Shoots did in that moment, all those teammates were standing around, that's when it gets handled. It's not something that is, okay, now let's suspend four entire seasons or now let's get police officers involved. No, that's silly. That's, that's petty. It's also silly and petty to pop somebody in the handshake line. But just because they're being silly and petty, we, the, the way you handle that is by being silly and petty in that moment. Not by going to extra lengths for all of this. That's, that's silly to me. And I push back on Handshake Line Elementary School as somebody who was a part of a many uh, Handshake Line incidents and skirmishes in the third, Why, fourth, fifth grade. <laughs> Yo, I've told you about Mike yes, Bell, I about <laughs> catching that ass whooping. Mike was nine. Nine when he caught that whooping in the Handshake Line. Can we line. get Mike Bell on the show someday? I I don't know why, but yeah, sure. I just we, want to hear Mike try. Bell's side of the story. I, I hope, I, I'm not sure if he remembers it. If he does, it's great. It's funnier. But, yo, like, come on, man. It, it's just no need for that. And, again, if you want to handle a, a situation that turned physical, you handle it right there. No need to, to get police officers involved and to talk about suspensions for a season. Suspended for a couple of games next year, sure, why not? Fine. There's Four no games. games to be suspended for, so it's then, a moot nothing, argument. Nothing period. happens. What happened in the, the, in the Miami Beach brawl? When, nothing. E exactly. Handle <laughs> it like that. Good grief. Thing, we'll never talk happen? about this again. We'll, we'll ultimately find out. But that's not even the biggest story coming out of the weekend for Memphis women's basketball. That, of course, would be the news that Katrina Merriweather, after two years at the University of Memphis, has decided to leave for the head coaching job at Cincinnati. It's her alma mater. It's where she played. It's where she started. She shared these sentiments on Twitter. She said, the one place that holds my heart forever and always, where I became a woman, learned about sisterhood, and teammates are forever. Today has already been full of overwhelming support and love. I'm blessed, grateful, and excited to honor those before me. Go Bearcats. She also had a message to Memphis describing her time here as a unique and special place. I've never fallen in love so quickly. I appreciate the opportunity to meet amazing people and coach unbelievable young women in an incredible women's basketball environment. We will never forget the feeling. Hashtag Go Tigers Go. Always. Katrina Merriweather brought Memphis basketball back to life. Period. The end. It has been a sheer joy to watch her not only poor energy and to draw energy back towards Memphis women's basketball, but to win and to get a postseason opportunity and to go to the NIT this year and to flirt with potentially stealing a bid in the NCAA tournament if they would have had the opportunity to win the American Athletic Conference and finishing second in the conference after being predicted to finish towards the bottom of the conference. All of that will never be forgotten. And now it is up to the university to find the next coach to continue onward, to not let fall backwards. And that will be important when they figure out who will be the next coach at the University of Memphis. But for Katrina Merriweather, home comes calling sometimes. It's life. It's how it goes. I would argue not one single person should be mad at Katrina Merriweather, ever. Because when you have an opportunity to go back to the place that means the most to you, Memphis can mean a whole lot. But for her, that's the spot. 
that was always going to be the spot. And she gets the chance to go back to Cincinnati. I think it's wonderful. She will be missed tremendously. She's been such a wonderful friend of the show, has given her time, have given her knowledge, come in and sat with us multiple times in studio. And we will always be so appreciative for that. But I will be rooting for Katrina Merriweather. She has a lifelong fan right here. Absolutely. And both of us. Yeah. Now, I, I would argue that it is Cincinnati and it is Memphis. So if you're a Tigers fan and you want to be upset about it, I got you. I think that's fine from a, a rivalry standpoint. Of, ah, we lost her to our arch nemesis, but it is home. It's not a rivalry can, anymore. Well, <laughs> Memphis and Cincinnati will always be a rivalry, Rivalry's just like Memphis forever. and Louisville will always be a rivalry regardless of the conference. But, you know, somebody not fans of the Memphis Tigers and even Tigers fans can take a step back and for a moment say, hey, what she was able to do in two years here, the energy she was able to inject into this program was monumental. And we'll, when we look back three, four, five years from now in Tigers basketball, assuming they make the right hire, is rolling, we'll be able to point back and say, okay, Merriweather started this and then this coach kept it going, just like we do with Norvell, right? It, it, it was started by, oh, why am I blanking on my man's name all of a sudden? Uh, Fuente. Fuente. It was started Justin. by Fuente. And Norvell kept it going, and now Silverfield is there trying to keep it going. So, hey, hats off to her. It was a great run, which are nothing but the best at Cincinnati. She'll be missed, though. Yeah, oh, absolutely. She'll be really missed. She's just a really cool person. Really, really cool person. All right, let's do some double tap, and we stay in the women's game. Some amazing games, some really bad games over the weekend, too. If you struggled through that LSU game, we are all in this together. But ultimately, CJ, I'm going to be disappointed because I know that South Carolina is going to win tonight, most likely. You never know. They play Maryland in the Elite Eight. I think South Carolina is going to win it all. Don Staley is an incredible coach. That team is an incredible team. They have all of the power to go out there and win another championship. But I will be so disappointed because I would love nothing more than to see a Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese national championship game. An Iowa LSU game. Just because those two players are so fun to watch and all of the additional theatrics that they bring to the game they're super skilled I mean Caitlin Clark last night for Iowa has one of the if not the most impressive performance in an NCAA tournament a 40 point triple double she is the only player in the women's or men's game to ever do something of that sort 41 points 10 rebounds 12 assists three steals eight of 14 from the three-point line in yesterday's win for Iowa. Before last night, Sabrina Ionescu had a triple-double in the first round against Indiana in 2019, and Dwayne Wade had a triple-double against Kentucky in the regional final back in 2003. Oh, it was amazing. He had 29 points. Sabrina Ionescu had 29 points. Caitlin Clark had 41. 41 points. She is phenomenal to watch and she's somehow even better than advertised like watching that game last night and watching her highlights are spectacular and it's probably going to go on to win national player of the year we'll see how that ultimately plays out but also angel reese for lsu like if you're not on the lsu bandwagon and i know like they don't feel like a, did you ask if they were a cinderella last week as a three seed i did a, a team i didn't realize at the time they got like three losses on the season yeah and I think what you will about Kim Mulkey for a myriad of reasons. I will never consider a team coached by her as a Cinderella or an underdog. It just feels like they exist in a different stratosphere. And Angel Reese, this was her moment following their win. Take a quick look. What they gonna say now? What they gonna say now? They're gonna say you're going to the Final Four. The game needs more players like an Angel Reese. Listen. She is phenomenal. She's so fun. She is incredible. And I don't like her. Oh, she annoys come on. me. She annoys me. She does. And I love it. Sports needs that. We we give, <laughs> there are a lot of dudes on the on in the men's tournament who are great and they annoy me. And I say it with my chest. Like I I don't like this player. I don't. I acknowledge that they're great though. But I don't like them. Angel Reese is that. And it's, I, I'm pretty sure she's the first uh, woman to, to make me say that. Like, uh, you're great, but I don't like you. I, I cheer against her. I want her to lose. Let's get it going. Somebody beat them. Who they got next? Um, they will play the winner of... Uh, oops. 
My women's bracket was quite good this year as well. Not to, oh, that not makes to sense. Brag on it. Robbie and I are talking over here. Robbie hates Diana Taurasi. I'm trying to figure out why. But Wait, he's a, what? He's a Tennessee oh, fan. Yeah, no. So that, that makes sense. Sports hate. Acknowledge the greatness, but hate the hell out of them from a sports standpoint. My so is the internet is struggling. We're I, trying I've to figure it, out. I've got it. Okay. Give me one second. Do you want me to look? So no, you no boy, the it? winner of Virginia Tech, Ohio State. I knew it was oh, the side gosh. of the bracket that UConn lost, and finally, like UConn's long. I mean, hell of a run. One of the most impressive streaks in sports history comes to an end over the weekend with UConn uh, finally not reaching a Final Four. They had made it to 16 straight Elite Eights and 14 straight Final Fours. And this year, it's a no-go. It hurt not having, we were talking about it in the chat, it hurt them not having Caitlin Clark. Um, but it's UConn. You just expect Paige them. Beckers. I'm like, it's okay. Paige Beckers, I apologize. Uh, not having Paige Beckers, it hurt them. It also hurts anyone who doesn't have Caitlin Clark. Yeah. So your statement was accurate. It's true. I, <laughs> you were not wrong. I was not in the tournament without Caitlin Clark. <laughs> That's how great she is. I, anyways, it hurt UConn not having Paige, Baker, Paige Beckers, but ugh, um, you, you expect them to get back because, hell, it's UConn. They, they've got yeah. all of the studs out there. They've got all of the stars. And I wanted to see UConn and South Carolina face off again just to see, speaking of handshake lines, just to see Dawn Staley and Gina Ariema get into it because you know they will. Whenever the next game is, they're absolutely getting into it in that next handshake line. No handshake line. Because those, they, those two teams and those two people in particular aren't real fond of one another. No, they are not. All right, I promised Robbie we would get to this last story, so I will make this our final double tap of the weekend. Millions of singles, millions of single people are set to join a new social experiment that claims to remove the need for dating Apps. So according to Vogue, 76% of people are open to being chatted up in real life. But how do you know 76%, which sounds like a lie. People. Please do not chat me up. People. <laughs> people. How, what percentage of that is women? Because you cannot Two. chat. Two. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Please. absolutely. 75% of dudes are willing to talk to you at any given moment. Maybe 1% of women. Do you remember that Cicely Strong SNL skit where she's sitting at the bar and like all these men come up yeah. and like say really nice, like feminist styled things. Yeah. And then when she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I, I don't really want to go home with you or talk to you. And they're like, you B, like yeah. you're a horrible person. Like that's why we don't want to talk to anyone at this point. But okay, 76% of people. Uh, allegedly, according to Vogue, people <laughs> say that uh, they're open to being chatted up. But the issue, of course, is how do you know who's single and who's not? So enter pair, which is a small ring that makes it easy to know who is single around you for allowing new connections to happen naturally in real life. It's the opposite of an engagement ring. So singles don't have to rely on dating apps. It is... A real thing. Here's and the if website. you are single, here is the website where hey, you wait, can go. Wait. <laughs> so, yeah, choose your country. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, we're doing it live. Yeah, we're going to do it for real, for real. You, married CJ, are going to set up a pair account? And so, listen, ask if you're single. Okay. I, I clicked no, and it kicked me out of the website. <laughs> Click yeah. So we don't have to try and log back into it. Like, this is the website. They got the second release coming because the first one sold out. Just scroll through here, Robbie. This is insane to me that we need a ring to show that people are willing to talk. And by people, we mean women. We mean women. And this is cool because if you're a woman and you don't feel like talking while you're pumping your gas, you don't want the Hey Beautifuls coming at you. It's only $26, by the way. Oh, you don't great. want the Hey Beautifuls coming your way. Then you can just take your ring off, I guess, and we're not supposed to talk to you? It says it's sold out. First release is sold out. The first out. release, but we got a second release coming. You've got to join the next gen. Yeah, the next, the pair next ringers. one. Go back why, up. Why Go back pair? up, Robbie. Right there. Listen, listen. What is the, what is the, uh, wait. Where can I wear my pair <laughs> ring? That was the one. Everywhere. In a bar, a plane, at the gym, on a train, at work, walking the dog, at a wedding, in a club. On the tube, ordering coffee, or the office, having a haircut, going for a run, playing tennis. You can just wear this damn ring everywhere to let people know you're a DTT. Down I the talk. A, I have a question. I love people who are DTT. 
<laughs> down to talk or DTC, down to chat. Um, what if you're colorblind? So that ring is obviously like a light teal, but if someone's it's colorblind, your blanket's color. it, it is my blanket. It would match. It would match my 2010 dorm room at USC. Um, big comeback for that color. Like, so Chris wears one of those rubber black rings because he's a man. Can't wear jewelry, jewelry. He's a man. He's gonna wear his little Amazon ring that you can get a pack of four for twelve dollars. So then when he loses them constantly, it's twelve dollars and not the ring that we had made for our wedding. I digress. But what if somebody saw that ring that kind of looks like the pair ring and didn't know the color difference and was like, "Oh, this guy's DTC." Uh, that would be upsetting. Yes, that, that would be upsetting. I'm just, I'm just playing devil's Easy. advocate with the pair. What if, what if this thing spins out of control and now we all got to walk around with various rings on hey, to, not, to not just oh let God. people know if we're DTT. It's like slap bands again. Yes. Oh, yes. no. But what specifically we are down to talk about. So, <laughs> like, you would have a hot pink ring and a brown ring mm -hmm. and an orange ring to let people know, okay, the hot pink is for a theater, the brown ring is for NFL, and then mm -hmm. the orange ring is for the NBA. Oh, so cool. these are the things I'm down to talk about. Ooh, could we get an all-encompassing sports ring? Just a that general sports baseball. ring? baseball. Oh, okay. <laughs> a general <laughs> sports ring minus baseball. <laughs> you have to wear an American flag ring if you want to talk about baseball. It's still America's pastime. I don't know. That could get complicated. You could take that a lot of different directions. So, I like this. I, I think your version of the pairing is much better. Yeah. So now we know, okay, this person wants to talk, but about things that I don't. This is all very middle schooly. Oh, yeah. Isn't yes. it? It, it is it is the the slap you, bands. You wore those, right? No. Oh, see, that was big in my middle school. Yeah, and then yeah, it became yeah. like super like sexual of like, oh, exactly. if you wear this color, this yep. is what this is the base yep. that you're willing to go to. And if you were this color, then you're a prude or whatever. Yep. The good old days. When you could tell how DTC a person was just from the color bracelet that they were. Then you had the lip. This is like the new Livestrong band. God, yes. Everyone oh. oh, God. What a time to be alive. Gave, what happened to all of those rubber bracelets? Oh, they're in the ocean. We what do you mean? We talk about pollution. I think that might be. Forget about. We, we spent so much time worrying about, like, the cans and how the turtles were getting stuck in the, the can holders. But I need to know what happened to all of the Livestrong bracelets and all of the replicas. There was a there was one of those bracelets for every single cause alive. If you were in a race, you got one of those bracelets. If you showed up for any sort of... Um, Community service event, you got one of those bracelets. If a kid was going through something at your school, you got one of those bracelets. We should bring those back. We should make rise and grind bracelets. Should we? So that can end up in the ocean as well? <laughs> let's go. I let's, cut my cans. I am a good recycler. Okay. What does that have to do with the bracelets? I don't know. <laughs> I don't you think this is going to work? No. 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 No, no, no. Well, maybe if they put it on TikTok. While TikTok is still alive and well, I swear if they take TikTok away from me, I'm going to be devastated. You'll be okay. No, I. Yes, you will. That's a. I appreciate Instagram your Instagram is going to do whatever TikTok. I hate Instagram. Did. I okay, like well, TikTok. Get ready to like it again. I don't want You'll to. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. It's the exact same stuff. You'll be fine. It is not the exact it's same. It's the stuff. exact same. No, content. it is a yes, it diluted is. version of the product. Multiple weeks later, the trends exactly. on TikTok. Some of the trends. Exactly. Some so the on trends TikTok, will go to Instagram first. Now. I don't know why TikTok just feels like a safer space where things just creatively fly. Where on Instagram, people don't share that same stuff. Like there's, there has to be a scientific reason why TikTok has content that Instagram does not. Or gets late. Or gets late. And, and the, the reason is because it's the youths are all exactly, on TikTok. The youths drive the movement. The youths are all on TikTok. When TikTok goes away, that where are they going to go? They're, they'll make something new. They're and not going to come where all of us millennials are. Then you'll hop on that and steal their joy. Whatever. The pair bracelet or the pair ring. Excuse Ooh, me. Are we getting bracelets now, too? I think we too? should get bracelets. I think a bracelet would be a better idea than a ring. A ring sits in too close of a space. It feels like you're trying too hard. It's like, I don't have an engagement ring. I have my single ring. And now I want everyone to know that I'm single at this bar. Not just Honestly, single, okay, no way. ready I'm to talk. I'm saying this out loud. As I'm saying, yeah, ready to talk specifically. Because I could not name one woman who wants to show up to a bar with a giant, like, ring. Talk to me. Come rear, talk to yes, me. Yes, please. Men, descend upon my seat and please chat with me tonight. Like, no. Not not just that. Like, 
wear it to the grocery store. No, women don't want to talk at the grocery store. Can you imagine at the store. gym? What if you forgot to take it off before you went to the gym? Oh, oh get ready. Get you'd ready be for the gym rolls. Let's get it going. Again, 76% of people are not willing to talk at any given moment. That's the they biggest aren't. lie of it's a number. A I need to figure out how that stat was brought forth by Vogue. Capital V Vogue. And I want to talk to the women who, who said, yeah, I'm down to talk. I just I want to talk to them, but not in a sit down interview sort of setting. No. I want them to be out running errands when I come up and try and talk to them. I guarantee you they don't want to talk. Guarantee. OK, we're super late. So we got to hustle up and get out of here. Before we go, I wanted to give a huge thank you to Brittany and Jacob Schultz. If you see CJ's amazing Sandpoint Idaho shirt, uh, the Schultzes are from Memphis. They currently live in Sandpoint, Idaho. They noticed when I lost my Idaho Falls sticker that I used to have on my laptop from when Megan Triplett and I went to Idaho Falls because Megan Triplett, the potato princess, got us the hookup with Idaho and potatoes. We went out to Idaho, had the time of our lives. And so I rocked an Idaho Falls sticker until it started to come off. I took it off a couple weeks ago and I got this amazing message from Brittany on Instagram who noticed that it was gone and said that they felt a connection because they're Memphians and there was a little bit of Idaho on this show. Uh, my dad went to Boise State, so I have a little bit of Idaho. I have two cousins at Boise State right now. I am down for this Idaho to Memphis cross-promotional love affair, and I'm down to continue it. So you'll notice this new awesome sticker is a Sandpoint Idaho sticker, and it's a grizzly bear, or at least it's some kind of bear. And they sent us so many goodies. They sent CJ his shirt. They sent me a lovely Sandpoint Idaho mug that I can use in the morning. And all kinds of Huckleberry content. I've already eaten the chocolates, so I can't show them. But this is Huckleberry popcorn, uh, Huckleberry jam. Oh, people are so nice. That's what I'm going to end with today. People are wonderful and nice. And if you have the opportunity to make someone's day today, go out and do that, by golly. Because the sun is out. Get in your own personal handshake line and say, <laughs> good game, world. <laughs> Wow, that's the stupidest thing I've ever said. <laughs> All right, we got to get out of here. No Grizzlies game tonight, but they'll be back in action tomorrow at FedEx Forum for three games in four nights. So rest up, my pretties. We'll be back tomorrow. It'll be a Grizzlies game day, and we'll see you then. Have a good one. Thank you for watching Rise and Grind. Tune in tomorrow at 8 o'clock to hear more from Jessica right here on Grind City Media. Good game. 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 Good game.